Hi babe, this is video number 12 of Touche Love Mom. I'm a little cold, so I'm sorry my voice is a little off today, but um, today I wanted to talk to you about some things I've noticed since I've been doing a lot of research and reading a lot of articles, some older articles and new articles from the Watchtower publications lately. But one thing I've noticed through the years, they've always inspired this kind of confident speaking. And they always put bits and pieces of scripture in everything they say. So in your mind, you think this is really coming straight from the Bible. And whatever they say seems like it must be something to follow because of that. But um, one thing that I saw that seems to capture that kind of writing is that um, article that I sent to you once called Our Cats for Christians. It's kind of a funny thing. It's, you know, just written for humor, but I think that it makes a good point of how things can be taken from the Bible and applied and seem to make sense, yet they're not really from the Bible. So let's go ahead and read that, go over it. Um, it says, Many conscientious ones among Jehovah's people today have wondered if Christians should own cats. The issue is of life or death importance, since to some stumble a brother that, is, that Christ died for is tantamount to putting a millstone around the neck and being thrown into the sea. Clearly, our eternal salvation is involved. First, let us consider what most scholars agree is the original Greek for the English word cat. Philos domesticus, meaning literally a contemporary house cat with all its beastly identifying char characteristics and behavior. Clearly the Bible, by using this kind of original Greek, shows beyond a doubt that it is the basic nature of a cat to be evil or beast-like, much like Satan is the original serpent and the great dragon. There are numerous reasons why a loyal, dedicated servant of God should use their Bible-trained conscience to arrive at a proper understanding of why cats are not for Christians. Consider the following fact with an open mind. And this article is actually fiction, but these facts are actually facts. I, I looked into this. So one, it was a common practice in ancient Egypt to worship cats as gods. As Christians, we are to guard ourselves from idols and worship no other gods. Such feline influence could lead to idolatry and thereby, thereby grieve Jehovah's spirit with tragic consequences. Two, cats were most likely present at Herod's birthday party when John the Baptist was beheaded. Clearly then, as loyal Christians, why would we even want to associate with animals that are without a doubt of such bad influence, remembering bad association spoils useful habits? To invite cats into our house may result in the same grave consequences as suffered by John the Baptist. Clearly, God disapproves of the party. Should we not then disapprove of cats the way God does? Surely. Three, throughout history, particularly in the Middle Ages and, research, and reaching its climax in the Salem witch trials of the 1600s, cats were recognized as carriers, if not direct incarnates of demons. Since cats were associated with the devil, could we, could we as loyal and dedicated servants of God therefore associate with cats and thereby associate with Satan himself as the God of the system of things? We would want to be subject, would we want to be subject to such vile influence and possible demonic attacks? Surely not. Four, nowhere in the Bible are there any type of cats spoken of in favorable terms. In fact, was it not lions of the first century who the devil used to devour faithful Christians? God himself stopped up the mouth of lions in Daniel's day. True, the small house cats of today are not lions, but being of the same cursed animal family used by the devil on numerous occasions throughout history, would it be wise or appropriate to own one? In addition, by owning any type of cat, would we not give an appearance of condoning their evil deeds through the recorded Bible and secular history? The Bible makes clear that God's people are no part of the world and that we are not to share in the sins of others. 5. The scriptures clearly indicate that neither Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Job, the apostles, or Jesus himself owned a cat. This was most likely because they did not want to be like the pagan contemporaries of their day who show no regard for God, how God feels about owning cats. In harmony with the pattern set by the faithful prophets of old, surely it would not be fitting for a Christian today to own a cat. 6. Finally, cats are unclean animals. Some unclean practices indulged in by cats include coughing up fur balls, licking inappropriate body areas, urinating on the floor, eating dead animals with their blood. 
sexual misconduct without the benefit of marriage, abuse of catnip, and stealing food from the table, just to name a few. Uncleanliness is one of the works of the flesh condemned by the Apostle Paul. The Bible clearly shows neither fornicators or thieves will inherit God, the kingdom. In addition, Paul admonished us to quit mixing in company with such unclean ones. Although the Apostle Paul was speaking primarily about Christians who fell into sin, there is no reason to conclude that his, this inspired Bible principle cannot be applied to association with cats. Uncleanliness is condemned by Jehovah, and the fact that Apostle Paul made no distinction when it came to associating with house cats proves beyond a doubt that loyal Christians must avoid all association with such animals. So it's kind of a funny article, but it shows how you can throw bits and pieces of scripture into things. And if that article came out from the governing body, you know, people would be probably, you know, horrified. They would say, there is no way I'm giving up my cat even though the scriptures do seem to point to it being correct, yet it's kind of amazing that so many people give up their family. And when I looked a little bit into a recent article, um, it's the April 2016 uh, Watchtower, let me get that, about being faithful. Um, there's a part that talked about Jephthah and his daughter and how he promised if he would be able to win the war, he would sacrifice to God the first thing that came out of his house, and it was his daughter. And it goes along to say um, that it can be applied to this day. So let me just go into paragraph 15, it says, when we dedicated our lives to Jehovah, we vowed that we would do his will no matter what. We knew it would not be easy to keep that, it would not always be easy to keep that promise, but how do we react when we're asked to do something that we do not like? Like Jephthah's daughter being basically sacrificed to never being able to have kids or get married. Um, if we overcome our feelings and willingly obey God, we prove that we are faithful to our promise. Our sacrifices may be painful, but Jehovah's blessings are always greater. And then it says in 17, paragraph 17, thousands of young Christian men and women are willing to sacrifice getting married or are choosing not to have children, at least for now. Why? Because they want to concentrate on serving Jehovah more. Also, many of our older ones sacrifice spending time with their children or grandchildren. Instead, they give their time and energy to Jehovah. Some of them work on construction projects or attend the School of Kingdom Evangelizers and move to a congregation that has a greater need for publishers. Others make plans to increase their service to Jehovah during the memorial season. He will never forget the loving sacrifice of these faithful ones. What about you? Would you be able to make sacrifices to serve Jehovah more fully? Well, when I read that, it reminded me an awful lot of things that I read in the past. And I've got some of those quotes pulled up and see if these sound very much like what we just read. Let me see. All right. Um, in 1938, the Watchtower November 1st brought up that it would therefore appear that there is no reasonable or scriptural injunction to bring children into the world immediately before Armageddon, where we now are. Also, the Kingdom Ministry June 1969, in view of the short time left, a decision to pursue a career in this system of things is no, not only unwise, but extremely dangerous. Many young brothers and sisters were offered scholarships or employment that promised fine pay. However, they turned them down and put spiritual interests first. The Awake in 1969, May 22nd, talked about the same thing in this April 2016 one, where it says that... Um, if you are a young person, you need to face the fact that you'll never grow old in this present system of things. And if you're looking, if you're in high school and thinking of a college education, uh, it could mean four, perhaps even six or eight years to graduate into a special career. But where will this system of things be by then? It will be well on its way to its finish, if not actually gone. And then in 74, the Kingdom Ministry in May, 
said, yes, the end of the system is so very near. Is it not reason to increase our activity? Reports are heard of brothers selling their homes and property and planning to finish out the rest of their day in this old system in the pioneer service. Certainly this is a fine way to spend the short time remaining before the wicked world's end. So all these things could have been prevented these things that didn't come to pass and they were telling people to make these sacrifices and and pretty much the articles made it seem like it was coming directly from the Bible's encouragement but there is nothing in the Bible that mentions that we should not have kids or not spend time with family in fact the Bible talks about children being a gift from God and the family arrangement being from him also first Corinthians 4 6 says through us you may learn the rule, do not go beyond the things that are written. So I thought those were some interesting things that I kind of noticed as I was researching more. And the next top of, topic I'm going to talk about is, um, since the our Cats for Christians kind of talked about their pagan origins, I want to go into some pagan origins that Jehovah's Witnesses avoid, but also several that are not avoided and just see maybe if we can figure out why. So I love you, babe. I, I hope you're doing well and I will talk to you later. Bye.